world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Ukraine and the Ru- Russia yesterday, this time yesterday, uh, we were in a state of uh, high alert because suddenly we got reports of a shelling attack yes. by Russia on a Ukraine village. A friend of mine, uh, Chris Hughes from the Daily Mirror, is out there reporting on it. He said that all actually this kind of incident is quite normal, uh, but not in the current circumstances as tension escalates. I mean, it is, it is unbelievable. But let's remember, 14,000 people have died uh, on that border, uh, essentially in a sort of an ongoing uh, mini-war between Russia and the militia there. So this has been going on, this shelling, this shooting, for years. But I think Putin is hes playing a, uh, a very clever game from his perspective. And I think we should expect this to become the norm for the next months, possibly the next years. Look, he's got himself back onto the world stage, He's got everybody's attention. But I often say, if you don't understand something, follow the money. And once again, it's about the money. And for Putin, this is all about gas prices and oil prices. Oil prices are going through the roof. Gas prices, we all know, with our energy bills, through the roof. That suits Russia. It suits Putin's own bank account. He wants to keep prices at these levels or even higher. And that's where I think the West is being naive, thinking that... Uh, these these high energy prices are just temporary. No, no, no. If Putin has his way, this is just the beginning and prices are going higher and higher. And I think that is what we've got to be to be worried about, be anxious about. And from the government's perspective, that's what they've got to plan for. And uh, this has highlighted the insanity of Western European countries' energy policies uh, for decades now, particularly Germany, which now gets most of its gas uh, from Russian pipes and uh, has been completely... Uh, impotent throughout this dispute to the extent that at one point when we, Britain, were trying to help Ukraine out by sending a few troops and a few weapons out there, uh, Germany banned us from flying over their airspace because they didn't want to upset Russia. This is madness. Oh, no, but in fairness, Kevin, they did kindly send 500 helmets. (laughs) Seriously, that was their contribution to this crisis. But, of course, it's not just Germany that it's exposed. Actually, most of the European continental nations are exposed to Russia in terms of energy, uh, and that is why they've strategically um, allowed themselves to become dependent on Russia, incredibly foolish, but we're just as bad. Let's remember, 12 years ago, we were, give or take, a net exporter of energy when the Conservatives took power, and here we are, uh, 11, 12 years later, we're a massive net importer of energy, which is why we're exposed to global prices, which is why we're exposed to these geopolitical games that Putin is playing. And here's the other strange thing. Normally, when the energy prices rise a lot, Kevin, then actually the supply taps open in the Middle East and elsewhere, and uh, you know, everybody sort of eases the, uh, eases the issue and then the, the prices might come down. That doesn't seem to be happening this time. I haven't got the answer as to why, but it is a real situation. And the other thing that is not really getting the airtime is China's got a power crisis. It's got a shortage of power. So China is bidding huge amounts for energy, for gas. That is keeping prices high. And I think the other big story over the next 12 months will be the the growing uh, closeness of the relationship between Putin and China, the communist regime there, President Xi, mm-hmm. uh, because... Uh, the more uh, energy that Putin can sell to China, then the more games he can play with the West. Good talk. 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 Bold talk. Talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.